Greetings. My name is Monk Rowe from the Hamilton College Music Department. We are filming for our jazz archives today, and it's a very special event. We have two of the jazz greats with us this afternoon, Mr. Milt Hinton, bassist extraordinaire, and the great jazz vocalist, Joe Williams. And we're going to let them talk and relate some of their experiences in the world of jazz. Yeah, that was, that was the thing, the singing with feeling, you know. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, you and I, we were talking about what you still what they call the good old days. That's right. Well, we when the out. union decreed that we should get three dollars a night. <laughs> That's right. The musicians. I wasn't in the union, so I didn't get three dollars. <laughs> I got a dollar sometimes, sometimes fifty cents, sometimes seventy-five cents. But do you know what they used to do? The reason I'd always <sighs> be grateful and love musicians, besides the fact that they've been my um, companions all my life. Sometimes the fellows used to put in a quarter piece for the singer. Yeah. And that, that, you know, that was really beautiful, man. Yeah, to me it was. Sure. Anyway, you know? And uh, hell? makes, it, 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 I tell people, I say, like 50 years. And for you, it's, it, it's even longer. Sure. That your association has been with musicians. That's right. I, I can't tell you how proud I feel and how grateful. I remember what really made me feel so great after knowing you all these years and we, the honest you at Carnegie Hall, well, and okay. I was in the band. Man, I felt <laughs> so great. I say, I can remember the time we, we, Joe would be there and we said, well, wait, wait, let's play this tune before we let the singer come up and sing. I said, no, nah, I'm so glad to be here yeah. for the singer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that, was a quite, that was quite a thing. George Ween um, made that thing possible. He told me, he said, uh, it's time for you to produce your own show. Yeah. I said, oh, I said, okay. And of course, absolutely. I got together with uh, my man, John, John Levy. John, absolutely. And uh, that was, I liked that very much, you know. And it went the way I wanted it to go. This was beautiful. Started a cappella. That's right. Then with piano. And yeah. uh, then uh, we brought on the rest of the rhythm section. Yeah, this big, big, right up and, big, and, uh, yeah. yeah, and the uh, three horns. Yeah. And then finally, the strings. Yeah, and finished beautiful. finished the first half of the concert, and then the second half we started it with uh, uh, Joe Turner and um, um, I can't ever think of who his name or um, had think? the band that had uh, Charlie Parker in it. What's and so all so the guys so from so Kansas City? Oh yeah, Jay McShann. Jay McShann. That's right. Yeah. McShann. Well, I've been in Carnegie Hall many a time, and I've played there for a very look at it with many big people, you know, Streisand and all of them. But I never felt like I felt that night because we come, we come all the way. I seen it all the way. Yeah. It's John Levy, you know. Yeah. His wife Gladys, first wife Gladys. Yeah. And I graduated from high school together. Yeah. You know, and we're, we're all friends in the city. Well, just tell me something. Yeah. Did you get a chance to get any, uh, just a taste of the Louis Armstrong thing with Lil Armstrong and, yeah. uh, um, the boys that came, the came, fellows that came from New Orleans. Yeah, well, I was coming from when the Phillips were there, when they were going to rehearsal. Yeah. And I come out when he had the hot five with Kid Ore. Ooh. With Kid Ore in there. Yeah. And I'd come to, start to come to rehearsal, stand right there, sons get back, you're standing in the way, you know. Oh, my goodness. But uh, that was my impression. That was my intro into show business. I'm listening, and at 5.30 in the morning, I'm delivering my newspapers down by the, the, the the Sunset Cafe, uh -huh. and I look, look in the window at 5 30 in the morning. I got my paper sack on my back, and there's all those guys, Lou, and all of them with tuxedos on, man, yeah. and a nice cold glass in his hand, yeah. and a nice lady standing there. Oh. And I got my paper sack on my back. I look and say, That's where I got to be. That's why we're here now. <laughs> He was ladies, so wonderful. What you say? They had a nice lady. Yeah, they always had that lady there. Yeah. And the witness is putting the chairs up on the tables. It's all over. The night is over. It's 5 right. 30 in the morning. Well, yeah. I've often said that, that I had that choice between uh, tuxedo and overalls. That's it. And that was the <laughs> choice when we grew up. That's right. And uh, we chose the tuxedo. And the Ellington and uh, the Earl Hines and all the guys. That, yeah. And Erskine Tate. Yeah. Uh, Louis Armstrong played in that band. And yes, he had yes, the band he did. Theater. My mother used to take me down there to see the, the band. Eddie was South was violin player there. Yes. Jimmy Bertrand was the drummer. He's the guy that taught line in Hampton. No Jimmy kidding. Jimmy Bertrand, yeah. 
Oh my goodness. I didn't know about Jimmy yeah, Burton. Yeah, those well, guys. he was one got the chance to play with him before he died. Yeah, well, and, I, and Major Ann Clark Smith. Tell oh, me about the old man. Well, that was my master. Trainer, right you there. and Ray Nance. Ray Nance, Lionel Hampton. Yeah. And she, you know, this was so wonderful about that. It was a, a black community. We didn't all go to the same school, but we all met musically. Ah. So far, with bands, and you like you, yeah. you went to some school. I went to Winifred's, but we'd had to, the rehearsals, and in the amateur hours, we met, and that's how we got to know each other. Mm -hmm. And to, to see all of that going on, we had Major Ann Clark Smith, and the Chicago Defender, the newspaper, hired Major Ann Clark Smith to start a youth band, ah. and that's where we we came in. I, my mother was was Nat Cole's piano teacher. <laughs> see, see, my mother played from that, that father had a little church on Dearborn Street, uh -huh. a little storefront churches, and my mother was an organist, a piano player for the church and for the BYPU. Uh -huh. So she had Nat there, and he was, he was always a nice guy. You know, yeah. I was always getting in trouble, and my mom would say, why can't you be nice like Nathaniel? <laughs> and I couldn't stand him. Because the kid we really thought was the likely to succeed was his big brother, Eddie. Yeah, Eddie. Eddie was bad, Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. He, he yeah. was really bad. He came, he, and he's the first one of our group that really got a gig. Cecil and Blake hired him. Yeah. And we go, oh, that's old Eddie. He went to Europe. You're right. And, with them and come back speaking Spanish. And, yeah. and that's where he organized that band and put that in it. Yeah. But that era, that whole era of, of seeing all those wonderful people come from all parts of the United States to, to Chicago, seeking a better chance for their children. Yes. That's really what they were doing. Yeah. You know? And here they could get a decent job. They had the biggest stockhouse in the world in Chicago, Armour, Cutterhead, and Swift. Mm -hmm. They had all of, the, all of the best hotels in the, in the United States were in Chicago. The, the, the Congress Hotel, the Blackstone, the Edgewater Beast. Palmer House. The Congress, yes, Palmer yeah. House. And they were there because Chicago was the center of the United States before airlines. Oh, yeah. People in California couldn't get to New York. It took almost a week to get to New York, and vice versa. Yeah. And if you did, you had to come through Chicago anyway. There you go. This you was the place. That's right. You had the 20th Century Railroad that ran from Chicago to New, to New York. And you had the Santa Fe Railroad that ran from Chicago to California. So people, businessmen said, well, ain't no sense making that trip all the way to New York or California. Let's meet in Chicago. Right. So that's where it was busting. And that's where we came in. Our parents found soft where they could be porters in the railroad stations. Right. Red caps in the railroad stations. Services. Yeah, services. Yeah. Uh, unskilled labor, which we had loads of, and a decent salary, and a chance for your children to get an education. That's right. And think about them schools, man. They were good. Weren't they wonderful? Oh, they were, they were, it, when I went to Anglewood High School, That's right. it, was, it was predominantly white. That's right. I mean, it was over 80, 20. That's right. You know, uh, sure. white when I went there sure. in 1933, mm -hmm. you know, 1933 sure. and 34, yeah. 35, 36, mm -hmm. and uh, 37, the end of that four-year period. But uh, the, uh, the music, though, in our town was the thing that really That's right. astounded me. Um, what was the name of those brothers? Uh, one played Cam oh, and Ham. the other played um, from, they came from New Orleans. Um, Old Ham Brothers? Well, the Old Ham Brothers, yes. But uh, they had uh, a bunch of the had, people, man, that came from New Orleans there that was really doing it. George Jimmy Hart. Noon and the yeah. bunch, you know. Oh, yeah. And the guys that played clarinet. A lot of clarinet players. Oh, came yeah. Up there. Every, ga every gauge out of Wonder Phillips. Yeah. We had uh, and, uh, what, Scoop Scary. Yeah, Bob, uh, oh, God, what was his name? Trumpet player. Real black cat, man. Bob something. It wasn't, he, it wasn't kind of he like was that. He was a lead trumpet player. Beautiful trumpet player. Bob Schaffner. Schaffner, yes. Yeah, Bob Schaffner. Oh, Schaffner. Great trumpet player. Yes. We, we uh, uh, those musicians, I see pictures sometimes sure. about them. You know. And then you, uh, Got the job with Cap Calloway and started traveling. Oh yeah, 1935. Oh, that was a fun The great he Cap had a great bass player, the most magnificent man I've Al Morgan. Al Morgan. <laughs> he was looked like he was almost seven foot tall mm -hmm. and immaculate. Yeah. Always, and I was afraid to talk to him because he was just too great. But I stand with the show was always stand out by the curb, mm -hmm. see how he how the bass player conducted himself, and he come out all sharp dressed, and the ladies would ask him for his autograph. And he reached out. I don't know whether he could even write rather than his autograph, but he would write his autograph on a piece of paper. And he reached in his pocket and put out a sheet of stamps and tear one off. Mm -hmm. 
and put it on his on his people uh, yeah. beside his autograph. Sure. I said, "Wow, man! If I get ever so one of these days, I will do that. Yeah. I haven't made it yet. <laughs> we're going to get a seat of steps." But oh, he was yeah. well. And how I got the gig? They went to California to do this movie with Al Jolson, the same kid. Yeah. And Al Jolson was so great. I mean, uh, Al Morgan was so great, and he had such photogenic feelings and things. The, 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 the camera looked around and the, the camera was on Al Morgan, it wasn't on him. Uh -huh. Well, that didn't sound too cool. Uh -huh. And the director of the movie told Al Morgan, said, look, uh, you got a lot of style. I said, if you were out here in California, every time we did a movie with music in it, you'd have the job. So Al Morgan quit and uh, 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 stayed with Les Heist Band, with Lionel and all those guys. And Kev Kettleway had to come back east uh -huh. without a bass player. Uh -huh. And Bud Johnson's brother, Keg Johnson, Keg. was in Kev's band and he said, well, look, Check out Milt Hinton if you go into Chicago. Uh -huh. He's down to the three deuces with Zulia Singleton right. and R. Tatum oh, and Lee Carter. I'm down there with them guys. Thirty-five dollars a week, the best I job know. in town. I know. And that's the, the deuces was the that's, that's right. That's what it was. The deuces. Yeah, broadcasting. That's too. right. And and uh, Fletcher Henderson was at the Grand Terrace. Thirty-five dollars a week yeah. with John Kirby on bass. Uh, 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 Summer player. Roy Elridge. Roy Elridge? Yeah, and, 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 uh, and, Chew, and, and Chew, Chew Berry. Chew Berry. And, Chew Berry. and, and they always look yeah. for a jam session. They yeah. got to, they got through to the Grand Terrace, they'd come down to the Three Deuces and jam with us. Right. So Kev came down to the Three Deuces and, and he saw the band down there. And he never said a word to me. He was all dressed up in his big cool kid and coat mm -hmm. and that derby. And when he walked in, all the people, that's Kev. <laughs> he walked in, he walked over to Zooty. He said something to Zulu, he says, how is that bass player? So we said, he's okay, his kid's okay. So he said, can I have him? He says, we said, yeah, you can have him. Nobody asked me nothing. Yeah, Zulu yeah. just gave me the cab. Sure, that's right. <laughs> and Zulu <laughs> said, kid, you gone? I said, I'm going where? He said, Cab just asked me for you. And they knew all this stuff. Cab just asked me for you. Yeah. You're gone. You're gone. I had, to baby, call you my <laughs> I had to call my mother up. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. Called my mama and said, look, I got this job. And I got to leave in the morning at 9 o'clock. Mm. And she had a little canvas bag with a clean silver underwear. Uh -huh. And I had this little gabardine bass wearing suit. Uh -huh. And got to LaSalle Street Station, <laughs> got on that bench bandstand. She didn't give you a little brown bag, take too? Yeah, well, she had the a little chicken. She wanted my chicken fried chicken. Little fried chicken. And, yeah. and, and I get on, this, get on the LaSalle Street Station. I'd never been on the poor one in my life, Joe. You, know? mm. you know, I didn't come from Mississippi on no poor one. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I get on this poor one. And I had all these great musicians on there. There's Doc Cheatham, oh, Kay man. Johnson, oh. Foots Thomas, all these giants, you know. And I said to Kay, Kay Johnson got me the gig. He recommended me. And I said to Kay, I said, Kay, I, I didn't ask Kay about no money or nothing. I said, he just told me to be here at 9 o'clock. He said, everybody in this band makes $100 a week. I almost uh, what? faded. I almost <laughs> faded. I sure I'd be a millionaire after two months. Well, and sure enough, you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh but then ben Wilson, ben Wilson was Joe, got on the late Joe. Oh, Lord. And I, I was I was weighed about 109 pounds, soaking mm. wet. And Ben Wilson staggered through the men's room and looked at me standing there being introduced to the band. Yeah. And he said, not who is that? He said, what is that? It was, and what? <laughs> talk about me. Yeah. And Cam said, that's the new bass player. He said, the new what? That's I never like him as long as I live. Uh, he turned out to be my dearest friend. I'm sure. Yeah, he was. was he was a, a big. He was a fun guy. He, 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 was, he was always putting people on. Made you think he's yeah. bad, but he wasn't. He was really a good. He had guy. the softest heart. Didn't he? And yeah. Be, I learned so much from this man. The cab, cab uh, also uh, would uh, have that front oh, that yeah. uh, would uh, scare people a little bit. You know. Oh, yeah. But you know the kind of person he really is. Oh, listen, For instance, man. with your firstborn. Oh, that's right. With your, with your when, baby. When I, that's right. When my wife was pregnant, I, I said, Cap, my wife is pregnant. He said, yeah, I said, mine too. <laughs> he said, have this one on me. Uh, when, when, so, so, so the baby was born, you know, Charlotte was yeah. born. And three months later, we're in California. And I'm trying to make that 2 o'clock feet and make the gig at night and bonus his half sick. And Cap said to me, Look, man, I told you to have that baby on me. Find out from Mona how much it costs for everything. But back in those days, it cost about $300 for prenatal care, yeah. everything. And he just laid it out to me, man. It was like man from heaven. Yeah. And when my daughter we got married, he was right there. That's yeah. my girl. Yes, sir. He was an amazing man. Really. Yes, he was. The, the stories, they really haven't been written about him yet. I really hope some young people will get to interview some people and work for him to really be able to write of 
put a great personality he was. He wasn't that much older. I'm, I'm 85. Cap was 87, 88. Yeah. But he was so far ahead of us in, in being the in, things that he yeah. did. But that his vision yeah. uh, of how to deal with what was That's in right. the times. That's For right. instance, um, he was one of the first, if not the first, of uh, black entrepreneurs who would hire a train, I mean, a, whole, a car, whole car, a whole car coach. for just his group. That's right. And so it wouldn't have to deal with other people. He certainly did that. Nobody would say right. anything because it was his car. And That's we'd right. get to town, he could park it on the siding, yeah. and uh, the fellas would have it stay on. That's and right. they eat on and what have you, That's and right. relieve themselves. And That's then right. um, it came time to leave. They'd hook it up and take it on to the next place. That's the story. But uh, that was a great comfort and innovation yeah. in those days, you know. He was amazing. He had a, a whole Pullman car for yes. himself. And a uh, baggage car. Yes. He had a baggage car big for enough to have a Lincoln, a green Lincoln in there. Yeah. And he had his chauffeur. He was right. really, and the dignity of this man, he insisted on cleanliness. Mm. He insisted on punctuality. And nobody you can you can face this. Anybody was ever in Cap Calloway's band will not come lay on your gig. Mm -mm, no, because no, no. he would say, "I've got to be here. You better be here." He had the greatest yeah. musicians. Now I remember in 1943 when he got um, uh, Illinois Jackie yeah. away from Lionel Hampton. That's right. That was that's a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that story? No, I don't know that one. Um, <laughs> Illinois went to. To Bay, to uh, not basically, but to to Lionel Hamp said, Hamp, you got to give me some more money. He said, I need some more money. <laughs> Hamp said, what, 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 what do you mean you need some more money? He said, you got to give me some more money, man. He said, what? He said, flying home. He said, flying home. <laughs> if a flying home, yeah, I, I recorded flying home with 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 uh, uh, Benny Goodman. <laughs> and, this, <laughs> and you know what the kid told him? <laughs> didn't sell four copies. <laughs> 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 because yeah. everybody in the world that had a saxophone yeah. played the Yeah. Everybody played it. You know? I gotta tell you this story how how Ben Webster got out got out of that camp's band. He wanted to play with Duke. Oh. Duke is the most clever man in the world, a clever. And Ben, we loved him. Now, Bonnie Bigard and Johnny Hodges are not speaking. Uh -huh. And Bonnie don't want to play tenor no way. He just wanted to play clarinet. Right. So they were having a tough time there. And ben, Duke had heard Ben playing. And Ben said, I sure would like to be in the band. And Duke said, I'd love to have you in my band. But Cab and my, Cab's band and my band are brother bands. We got mm -hmm. the same office. We can't take anybody from one band to the other one. <laughs> but Duke with his clever, but Duke with his clever sister. But if you didn't have a job, I'd have to give you one. <laughs> the, light, the light, the light up in Bill. <laughs> The light lit up in Ben's head. Oh, God. Yes. And so oh. I tell you, we went to Cleveland, Ohio, <laughs> three and out of the Ben's come to me and say, I got it. I'm going to quit. Mm. I said, what are you talking about? We made $150 a week. You crazy? He said, no, I, I can do better. He says, I, I find out. He's, so he said, I keep care his notice. So Cap mm. said, why are you quitting? You want some more? He said, no, I don't want no more money. He says, I just want to freelance a little bit. So Cap said, well, who can I get? Fletcher Hilson was in the Grand Terrace uh -huh. with Chew Berry, I just yeah, told you, yeah, John yeah, Cook, yeah. $35 a week. That's the God's honest truth. And here we are making $150 with Cab. You're right. In the tree and out of So he said, I can get Chew Berry for you. So Chew, Cab said, you can't. So he called up over that told Chew that it was $150 a week. Right. Chew jumped right on the train. Right. Come over to, to, come over to Cleveland <laughs> and sit right for two days, sit on the bench there with Ben. And Ben showed him Cab's book. Yeah. And Ben split. Cab and Ben had heard that Duke was going to be in town two weeks from there uh -huh. in Chicago. Right. So when Duke got in town, Ben was standing there and said, I ain't got no job. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's how the. That's how the, the, the Oh, that's made. so beautiful, man. Yeah, very cleverly done. And he wrote for him so beautifully. Yes, she did My greatest mistake. Uh, uh, I remember that. Mm. I got a bad man ain't good. And all the, all yeah, the, all yeah. the marvelous things that, that he wrote for him. The first thing, I think one of the first records I bought was Truckin'. Mm. And um, and what, what didn't they, he did the other thing. 
Bad cottontail. Yeah. What was that? Well, Ben, ben wrote a saxophone chorus for that. Yeah. Dad, 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 dad. And Ben came to me and said, Look, I just wrote a tune, and oh, yeah? Duke is going to fix it up. Yeah. I said, What's the name of it? Ben, ben named it Shucking and Stiffing. Oh. And see, <laughs> that was the name that Ben gave yeah. it. When Duke put it on, on the air, got it on, cottontail. he called it Cottontail. Yeah. But then was that I love that. The, uh, people talk about Ben Solo, but one of the things that I love about it is the reed chorus. That's right. For all the reeds. That's right. Do you die? Do 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 yeah, he's had a deal. Sonny and Sonny, Sonny Greer, nobody talks about him, you know? But Sonny Greer he had the theory. That, yeah. that he had the theory that he said, somebody said to him, how, what is the job of a, you know, of a drummer with the band? Sonny said, to try not to get in the way. That's true. And they would swing, you know, they said, da, da, I need to go, jump, 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 jump. I said, that beat, oh, it was really beautiful to watch mm -hmm. and to listen to, you know. My band. Yeah. <laughs> dancer there. Yeah. Now, that's one of those people that Ellington used to talk about. Uh, he said, our music is made for dancing. Oh, yeah. But there's no more ballrooms for us now. That's what I said. You yeah. know? Well, I feel sorry. I feel sorry. That's the reason I take so wonderful of you. And uh, I've seen you at work, and I, that's what I, what I do a great deal of, is trying to go around to the schools now and impart some knowledge to these young people because they don't have the apprenticeship. We don't have the apprenticeship for them to come in like we came in, no. the youngest guy. I mean, I come in Cab Calloway's band with all these giants, Ben Webster and Cab and Doc Cheetah, you know, and they got a chance to learn something about discipline. And who and things like that. I, we don't have those bands for our young young musicians to get in. It's with the the masters. It's sit down and watch them. That's you know, true. So we have to try to do that in the schools. And yes, we, are, we, do. we, we do. We're trying to do that, and yeah, I know you are. And Clark Terry is sort of masterful at that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Oh, Clark is. He's a just man, I learned so much from him doing that. Yeah. That sort of stuff, and it, it's really important. I insist that the uh, the they don't get a chance to to do one thing. That is to listen and to hear the other musicians that they're working with. That's true. Everybody's got a microphone in front of them, you know, with a, with a, with a microphone in yeah. front of them. That's right. And uh, have a, well, look, I can't hear my monitor. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, uh, that, that kind of, everybody's an engineer. That's right. But um, your monitor, but wait a minute. You, you. I start by telling them, if you can't hear everybody else in this organization, you are yeah, playing too, too loud. loud. That's, That's all there is to it. That's right. I mean, and if you can hear, I said, how are you going to relate to what you haven't heard or what you can't hear? Mm. And music is relative if it's nothing Absolutely. else. I mean, otherwise, I mean, you're just out there blowing, yes, and it yes. don't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. It's not going anywhere. It isn't saying anything. And, yeah. and a thing like this is a good thing. So the young people can get to see us and talk to us, and, and we can get to hear them yeah. and speak freely about certain things. I'll tell you a funny, funny thing that happened to me last night. The last two weeks or so before I came on the boat, I've been teaching artists in residence at the Manhattan School of Music. Uh -huh. And it's wonderful up there, these great young kids and things. And last night I was sitting at the, the table having dinner and a beautiful little girl came up and said, Mr. Hatton, uh, you remember me? I was in your class at, at the Manhattan School of Music. A young bass player, a girl, beautiful girl. And I said, well, yes, my dear, how you do, you know? So uh, she says, I'm uh, Benny Green's friend. I'm here with Benny Green. Ah, uh, so nice. So my, my wife said to me, is that the girl you give the set of strings to? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I always give young people sets of strings with that. But she, but she was so pretty. My wife said, well, was that the girl you give the set of strings to? Oh, my God. But it was God. so wonderful to see him coming up. Sure. With Benny Green and all those young guys that I see coming out of here. It's just amazing. Yeah. It is nice uh, to see that the our tomorrows are really in very That's good right. hands. And very I, good I'm hands. so happy about that because people don't usually see us only as a, 
uh, the, the derogatory things about us. They don't find out about the young ones that are really doing something and accomplishing something. And we have to let them be seen and heard sometimes. Hmm. All that people talk about is uh, the things that are happening that are very bad, you know? That's true. They, they, they wouldn't, they don't, uh, they wouldn't write up in the newspapers or in the magazines about that I've been married to the same lady for 56 years, mm, you know, right. or that I was a deacon of my church for five years. Right. They, they would never be, they would never, but just maybe what they're doing, get a ticket for something, and it'd be all over the world yeah. see, in a second. Yeah. And that's got to be stopped. We got to make it better than that. Yeah. And our young people are doing a better job of that than some of us did before. I'm very yeah. happy to report that. Well, the nice thing about it is that, um, because we've traveled the way we do and we go everywhere, um, we have a chance to uh, be a proper extension representing the United States of America, right. my role models. And human, uh, rep representing humanity, That's per right. se. That's right. I mean, in going wherever we go, and the message that we carry is like beauty, love, and rhythm, and expressing yourself. Uh, musically, and what yeah. have you, and it's that's why it's probably the world's, I mean, our our greatest export, yeah. America's greatest yeah. export anyway, the but, music itself. Uh, well, it's an auditory art. It's yeah. understood. It's universal. Yeah, we we, we recognize people and we and appreciate people by how they sound. Yes, true. The whole art of, of our things is, is how we sound. We want to be around people that sound good, so we can improve ourselves and improve the whole thing. That's and right. it's universal. That's right. The same B flat is the same B flat in China as it is here. That's right. And it's, it's a u very universal thing. And it's nice. Be, it's it's nice because we uh, enjoy the the European classical music. Absolutely. And European folk music yeah. and gypsy music. Yeah. I mean, we the feeling of it all. Russian music. It doesn't matter what it is. It's music. It's it's, yeah. it's music. And uh, uh, Ellington said it. it, it it's, uh, that, Categories it's music. It's, it's there. It's either good or it's bad. That's you know? right. It's good music. It's good music. And you know? we, we we have to teach them and learn them now that that you must get the academics. It isn't it's classical. It's academic. You learn the academics of your instrument and about the theory of music, and then you can apply it any kind of way you want to. Sure. You can make it make it blues. You can make better blues, a more explanatory right. blues yeah. according to how your academics are. You know. Who does that young man, Spike Lee, the yeah. son of a, of, <laughs> the, of a bass player at the Chino yeah, in Chicago? Sure. Is Mo Better Blues. Mo Better Blues. <laughs> I, I, Spike Lee. <laughs> Billy. I work with Billy, one of the most magnificent men. <laughs> a, true, a true, true flower child. Isn't he? Isn't he? Flower child. True. Really? Well, he was part of the choir. After he was, a, he was a conductor in, uh, of the bass choir. New York bass choir. Mm -hmm. He was a conductor. Yeah. And, and Bill didn't, didn't have any money and didn't care about any money. No. no. And the only people in that bass choir that was making any money was Ron Carter, Richard yeah. Davis, and me. Yeah. We were making that's a record date. And we were working And on you pulled in Cranshaw. Yeah, that's right. As I remember. That's right. We came, we you came pulled in Cranshaw. You, you brought him to New York with you. I, New York, we, he, uh, we came into. He was the only one of the trio that came in uh, to one of the record dates uh -huh. because I always. Uh, was fortunate enough to get you, O.C. Johnson, yes. and yes. Uh, Hank Jones, yes, right. and uh, well, Jimmy Jones and I would wait till we could get you, till you were available to have our record dates. I remember and, Bob Cranshaw uh, looking over my shoulder. I got pictures right. of him looking over my shoulder, that is right. observing what, how, what's required in the studio. He came in, and you know now the, he is a recording studio. <laughs> right, it's true. But you know what, what? The thing about that that was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. You were doing the. Um, with Bobby Rosengarden, you yeah. were doing a television yeah, show. Yeah. Uh, what's the boy's name? Dick, uh, Dick Cavett. Dick Cavett. You're yeah. doing Dick Cavett's television show, and uh, so they wanted uh, to get they wanted to fend the sound. Remember that? Yes, yeah, right. Sure. And uh, and uh, this was years later now, yeah. many years later, and uh, one day you were around Cranshaw, and Cran you said. Uh, Cancer. What's the matter? And you said, man, they want this thing here, and I don't know if I can get this right. That's right. Cancer's, come on over here and let me show you. That's right. <laughs> you know, I was scared to that death. That whole thing turned around. 
I sure you know? did. That well, he I'm, was able to, to help sure you. He showed me. And I was, you, a, I was scared to death of him. You showed him. Right. That didn't he turn right around and was able to show you. He showed, and I, I took, I went down in the basement of my house and got me one. Yeah. And I practiced with the radio. Yeah. And I was, and somebody called me for, Dick Hyman called me for a, a Fender record date. Yeah. And I said, oh my Lord, here I got this Sidewinder. And everybody else got their regular instrument. I walked in the studio with this Fender bass. Mm -hmm. and, and we got to playing, and I'm playing the thing. I don't know nothing. I, I know the finger, but I don't know nothing about the, the equipment. Mm -hmm. And the engineer said to me, he said, Jaja, ja, will you give me a little more highs? And I start to go up this way. On, <laughs> <laughs> on the, you went up the fret? <laughs> yeah, I went up the fret. <laughs> I didn't do anything but the amplifier. What was the amplifier? And my friend, my friend Barry Galvin just reached back to the amplifier oh, and put a little more treble in there. Barry the Galvin, yeah. man. We, you, yeah. well, he yeah. was the other part of that That's group. right, New York Rhythm Section. That was the New York Rhythm Section. We would say, are, right. they, uh, are they uh, available? Then we will record. If yeah. you weren't, and we did that uh, for years, we did that, That's man. Right. We made three record days almost every day. Did we? <laughs> 10 to 1, 2 to 5, and 7 to 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was, that was the... Uh, the, a beautiful time. It was a beautiful. Well, what it was is, is what you personified and what you always been like. I, I tell everybody, everybody says, but you, Joe Williams can sing anything. I never heard him argue about a key. You know, <laughs> <laughs> never heard him. Say, what, today, what tune do you want? You know, and that's what, well, that's what we, we tried to do. The three of us, Hank Jones, Barry Gabbard, Ossie Johnson, and myself, we tried to play for you what you, it's your date. Yeah. We'll try to make you sound good. That's what a rhythm section is supposed to do. If it's my date, then I'll tell everybody what to do. But mm -hmm. on your date, we're going to do some, whatever we can do to help you sound good. It was beautiful to see the face expression on your face in O.C.'s. <laughs> and Hank, yeah. the, when the new music was put in front of you. Yeah. I mean, like, hey, yeah, yeah let's go. do, yeah. yeah, hey, listen, look, look, look what we got, you know. Um, wow, you know, we, like, if somebody, if somebody brought you a new gift. Yeah, we were. You know, because Jimmy Jones was, uh, right. was writing then. And that's right. Oh, yeah. Well, oh. I, was, I was his contractor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bless his heart, Jimmy Jones. Oh, man. That was a uh, We could really read music, me. and that was a, a really thing that yeah. made us as well. But I thank my mother this very day for that. Yes. Because I, I wanted to play everything, you know, and she said, you get to learn and read that music. Yeah. And that's what we could do. We could read. Sure. Uh, it, uh, Adley, young Adley is on the on his boat here. Yes. And yesterday on the Meet the Stars, he was telling them some people about a picture. I have a picture I took of Cannonball. Yeah. Sitting down with a stack of music, he was running all over the music stand, all down on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, What do I say? I've, I've got that picture of yours. I said, Well, that was on a date with Barry Gavis on guitar, Art Farmer on trumpet, Cannonball Adley on saxophone, and yours truly on bass. No piano, no drums. I said, it's the hardest record date I think I ever made in my life. John Benson Brooks wrote a thing called the Alabama Suite. And all the, no, he, and all the covers off everybody. Yes. You just out there in the open. The cannonball is sitting there looking at that music, and he played every note of it. It was yes. so beautiful. Yeah, well, he was, he was, uh, he was the, Julian yes, uh, right. was articulate in more ways than one. That's right. You know, he, he was a teacher for a long time. That's right. Coming out of, he tells a marvelous story about um, Benny Carter coming through mm -hmm. Florida, and he sent word for Benny to come over to where he was playing, you mm -hmm. know. So he looked up, and this fellow walked in, and sit down at a table right under him, everything, had a case with him, mm -hmm. ordered something to drink, and was sitting there and listening. And finally, he reached and pulled out his alto and put it together, he come up on stage, and he said, Benny couldn't come, but he sent me Porter, <laughs> Porter Kilburn. <laughs> Good Lord. He said, when Porter got through with him, he said, well, I guess I better go back and study, practice, study practice. some more. That's practice right. some more. That was That's funny. Right. Was just, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Benny couldn't come. He sent me. <laughs> Kevin told that on himself, man. It was it, funny, really. It's a it was a beautiful era. Yes, it and was. It, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that that we was, we survived it. We survived it because yeah, we we uh, we, we were lucky. Maybe that's right. A million reasons we were lucky, because that's the first one. I I I think that the way we we came up, like you spoke about the church. Yeah. And. Uh, Obviously, from a Christian family. That's right. And I will say, I said last night on stage, um, I think that uh, one of the reasons maybe that we turned out the way we were because 
if we did anything wrong, really, Ooh. really wrong, man, I mean, we couldn't go home because they would have killed us. My mother had the shortest fuse of anybody, you man. Know? And, yes. and you couldn't embarrass them and get away with it. My mother would tell me, look, you can do this. If anybody else can do it, you can do it. Now go down there and do that. I remember once I had a scholarship at the YMCA on Wabash Avenue. Yeah. Scholarship, and I'm playing violin. And I went down there, and uh, nobody spoke to me. And I, I didn't know any of the people. Nobody spoke to me. And I felt terrible. The girls didn't say anything. Dorothy Donegan was one of the young girls. Yeah. They wouldn't speak to me. So I come back home to my mom. I say, I'm not going back down there. Nobody said anything to me. The guys didn't speak to me. The girls didn't speak to me. She says, I didn't tell you to go down there to socialize. Mm. There's a scholarship involved. Mm -hmm. And you can play it. Go back down there. And I went back down there and got that scholarship. Yeah. But that was the kind of a lady she was, like That's I told right. you. Well, you know, the ni nice thing about that, I mean, like many people didn't know it. Uh, they know about uh, Ray Nance, the violinist. That's right. But they don't know that Ray, uh, Ray used to play second violin in the orchestra That's school right. because the con uh, you were the concert <laughs> master. Yeah, I was a concert <laughs> when I was a year older. With the violin, so, yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. I had the first chair. First chair. And, and uh, when violin. I graduated, Ray got the first chair. Yeah, yeah. And we were both doubling up, doubling on bass and violin. Uh -huh. But of course, then Ray went out with his violin and his trumpet. Yes. But there's no double for bass, you know, no. in the band. There's no time to put the bass down and play something else. Where I, was Truck? Truck came to the Truck, city. Yeah, he was in the, Chicago. He was? Yeah, Jeff Truck was there. Truck, uh, and there's a big decision as whether I taught Truck or whether Truck taught me. Oh. We were the same age, but we were rather well together. Oh, Israel, Israel Crosby was the one that blossomed oh, out. Man. He was, we were older, but Israel was from the west side. Yes. And Chicago was... Uh, and his sister could play piano. Yeah, sure. Oh, his sister played the greatest piano. It's funny how Chicago was set up there at that time when we were young. Uh, the, 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 the south side was 99 and 4400% black. Then there was a group of free black people on the west side. Yeah. Now, for some reason, we on the south side thought we were more affluent because there was more churches over there we were on the south side and more of us in schools over there. But here comes Cosby and his sister and, yeah. and a lot of guys from that west side that was just out of sight musicians. Really? Entertainers, really great. Really super, you know. That's what I remember working with her at a place called The Jug. Um, uh, I'd take from table to table. That's right. You know, and uh, split the tips, you know, with the guys That's at, right. uh, on the stage. And she was one of the people on the stage. And she could play anything. Yeah. That was before the old boy with the band got, got you know, got, got her and took uh, her with his band. Uh, and which she stayed with him, I think, till she died. Yeah. You know. But uh, Buckner or something like that. Yeah. Well, somebody, yeah. one of the boys, one of the guys had a band yeah. there. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, she was working playing the piano there, and uh, Israel was playing bass with us for a while. That's right. But oh, he was so beautiful. He was beautiful. God, did he play good, man. He, he, Israel Just, Crosby yeah. and Wilbur Ware, that's another bass player from yeah. Chicago. These two guys, I remember listening to them play, and I always said, I wish I had thought of that. Yeah. Yeah. Israel Crosby played the most beautiful notes. Yeah, didn't he? he played, uh, Those things that he did with yeah. Ahmed Jamal. Yes, yes, right. You know, and the with things Montiana he did with and, uh, and stuff like that that they did together. And he did the things he, before that with Benny Goodman. Yes, after, I think, wasn't it? Uh, I'll tell you a funny story about Benny Goodman. Now, Benny Goodman was nine months older than I. Uh. July 18, 1923, I took my first violin lesson. This, my mother sent me to, to the west side to the Jane Adams Hall House every Saturday uh -huh. where kids could get music lessons for 25 cents. Oh, man. Benny Goodman was right there. It was, right. Nine, it was nine in his family. Right. We were taking, 1923, we were taking music lessons together. And we remember, we remember that. Yeah. We argued and fought and fight. And, uh, he fired me and hired me back again. But we had the respect of a, a musician. Yeah. A good musician. He wanted a good musician, and certainly he was a good musician. Yeah. He was, it's unfortunate that he wasn't nearly liked as well as we would wish he had been liked. But it was because he was such a insatiable desire for, for perfection. Yeah. And he, you know, Benny wasn't born in Chicago. No. He was born in Russia. Ah. Uh, he was born in Russia, in Kiev, right outside of Kiev. I but see. Because, but when his mother and father came to Chicago, he was a baby in arms. Uh -huh. So you can find your, your papers for your child. Yeah. It's born in America. Yeah. 
I found out they just lived. And we kept to our friendship was to, to the last. Yeah. We, if his daughter got mad, our children were together. Yeah. If his daughter got mad, he called me up and said, uh, hey, Milton, uh, my daughter's getting mad. You didn't want to come on over to the party. He said, bring your bass. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Oh, God. And we He's sit funny. There, and he was all dressed yeah. up in his finery, you know, and yeah. so proud of his daughter getting mad. And we had George Barnes there. And Bucket Fitz and really, and a bunch of musicians. And we over in the corner playing, and everybody's congratulating Billy Goodman because his daughter's getting ready, and his foot is good, like just patting his foot. The next thing we know, he's got his clarinet. He's right over there with us. Oh, he was yeah. an insatiable musician. Yeah. He, did you hear that marvelous story that Mel tells about him, Mel Powell? Yeah. He says, uh, Benny came out to California in later years, yeah. called him up and says, uh, Mel? He says, yeah, Benny. He says, uh, Let's do lunch. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Mel says, yeah, all right. Uh, are you buying? He said, it was a long pause. And then he said, let's go Dutch. <laughs> he, he, he couldn't get away from that. Well, I, I, got, I got a photo with this amazing Billy Goodman stories. But I, Carl Jefferson, you know Carl Jefferson, he just passed from Concord Records. Yeah. Carl, Je Carl Jefferson was out there in California, and he would have a big jazz party out there, and he called me up. He said, Milton, I'd like for you to bring a group of major musicians from, from, from New York out to West Coast. He said, get some guys. I said, okay, I'll get them together. So I got Joe Jones, mm -hmm. Claude Hopkins, Good. Bud Johnson, uh, Billy Morton, mm -hmm. Roy Eldridge, <laughs> and as I mentioned, Joe Jones and myself. He couldn't get a more senior group than that. So we, we're going to go to California to do this this concert. So Benny Goodman's going to be out there. So he, Carl Jefferson said, he told Benny Goodman, he said, well, Mills is coming out and bring some guys. And he says, oh, he is? He said, well, maybe I get him to play with me. He said, call him up and tell him that. So he, Carl Jefferson said, no, you call him and tell him that. Now, Carl Jefferson's giving me $6,000, $1,000 a piece for each one of us to come out there. And Benny Goodman called me and said, hey, Mills, I see where you're going to be. You're going to be out here in California at the concert. I said, yeah. He says, I'm closing. He said, well, you want to play with me? I said, yeah, Benny, I don't mind playing with you. I says, uh, what's the bed like? He said, would well, $185 be OK? <laughs> I said, oh, wait a minute, Benny. Wait a minute. I said, I'll be out with 100 He said, OK, what do you want? So I figured out, I, I got greedy. I figured, well, I'm getting $1,000 already. Mm -hmm. I just asked him for 500 more. Mm -hmm. So I said, if you give me 500, I'll, I'll do it. He hung up the phone on me. <laughs> <laughs> he hung up the phone. This is Mel. Yeah. Mel, uh, they, they did a, a show, a television show out there. Um, Merv Griffin. Yeah. Did a Merv Griffin show, I understand. And so, uh, they said, well, why don't we do, um, I know that you know, I want to, you know, something like that. So Mel struck out, you know, a tempo. Then Benny said, too fast. Mel says, not for me. Yeah, you know <laughs> that's, that's great stories about so, Benny. So, you should have yeah. Cy Johnson could tell you stories about uh, him. You know, is uh, he called Cy Johnson and asked Cy to come out to help him fix his repertoire, fix his mm -hmm. his books, his music. You know, he said it should be in order. You know, would you come out and help me organize it? So he said, Yeah, Benny, I'll come out and do it for you. So he goes out to the house and says he, he walks in. Benny he says, Hi, how are you? Come on. Um, uh, what can I do for you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So he said, you told me you wanted me to come out. He said, oh, yes, I tried to. So he shows him where the music is and everything. And he said, he's in there, and the phone rings. It's Benny. Benny's another part of the house calling him over in the music room. <laughs> talking to him. He says, uh, what are you doing? He says, I'm, a, dude, I'm fixing the music. Like, I'm getting it in order the way you, oh, yeah, OK, all right, you know. <laughs> and he'd come in, and it just uh, it just disrupted everything, boy. He, he, he was, he said, but he, he was uh, 
what he is. He is Benny Goodman. That's right. And when he puts that instrument in his mouth, now there's one other thing. You spoke about him in Chicago, Illinois. They yeah. used to bring him over to the club to hear J Jimmy Newman. Jimmy Newman. Absolutely. And what were those two brothers? One played drums, I think, and the other played clarinet. Oh, uh, um, Johnny Dodge. Dodge. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh man, Johnny Dodge, man, and those cats, man. They, they were yeah. something. He he uh, came over, and when you hear him, if you heard them, as you and I did. Mm -hmm. Then you know where Benny came from and where he was, you know, was coming from. Oh, absolutely! Through. Like I know that you know, you know the that stuff he plays, all that, well, all the intricate right. stuff that he plays. Man, he kind of, he came right out of and the lower register things where he played. Yeah, well, he he missed that about Jimmy Newman. Yeah, and I can remember because in the thirties I was working with uh, Eddie South, yeah. great violin player. And I got the job. I was thrilled to, to play with Eddie. Just come back from Europe. Yeah. And we got to give those, those men of what we call the, on the other side, the gangsters, a lot of credit for oh, yeah. for helping music along because they own those clubs and they kept music. They, they patronized club, it. Composed, composed group. They had, Al Capone had a cotton club over on Cicero. And he had, uh, he wanted to open a cotton club with black entertainers and white customers. Yeah. And the gangsters. And he opened a club downtown, it's called a, the, the Club Ruby Art for, his gangster of pals just to have some place to come and bring their ladies to have lunch. Yeah. You see, with like 7,500 people. Yeah. Put Eddie South in there. Yeah. And we played all these different places for him. And I, I remember uh, Dix to be it was a conductor for Ben Burney's band. Right. And his father was a violin player, so he used to bring his father over to hear Eddie South. Mm. And Ben Pollock was playing at the club in Ben Chicago. Pollock. Oh, my and goodness. I, and, and Jack T. Garden, Benny Goodman. Uh, Woody Herman, all that bunch know, came out through Ben Pollock. That's right. They would come over, hang out with us down the right. on the south, on the north side. Well, the music always, they, yeah, the musicians yeah. always got yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, like his, like Benny. Yeah. Uh, he never made any fuss about it. No. He never uh, made any political statements, anything about it, or any social statements, anything about it. All but the time. He introduced Teddy Wilson. That's right. And um, uh, and and the boy uh, uh, Charlie Christian, uh -huh. and, uh, right. and and Lionel Hampton, yeah. and later on, I That's mean, Sid Catlett, Sid and Cootie Williams, Cootie Williams you know, everybody. Basie. He didn't care. He played. No. The music was the thing. Uh, all and, the toy art. Yes. You just listen to how you sound. Really, he didn't, he didn't <laughs> care about it. And Char Charlie Shavers. That's right. And remember, Shavers <laughs> took a beat. He told him. Uh, 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 people, you know, people, was, they were scared, they were fright, frightened of Benny, you know. Yeah. And they were rehearsing, they're going to do a job, you know, rehearsing. And Benny says, all right, let's, uh, let's go over this thing again now. And he can play and play. He says, yeah, okay, now, uh, okay, let's do it now one more time. And Chucks, he said, Charlie Shea said, Benny? He said, yeah, Chucks, what is it? He said, you can get it tonight or you can get it now this afternoon. Can't have it both ways. <laughs> he said, well, that's it, fellas. Uh, that's in the rehearsal today. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. You cannot have it both ways. Yeah. That's Those right are there. two dancers, man. Oh, dancers. Wow. I mean dance. They can dance, like, in the music. They can dance. i tell you one of the most poignant uh, appearances I ever made with Benny Goodman. It was during the, the Reagan administration at the White House. Mm. And uh, the King of Jordan was coming to a state visit. And usually when a dignitary comes, they ask him what kind of music does he likes. And he can decide whether he ought to opera, if they ought to opera singer, if he likes jazz, he'll get a jazz singer. So the King of Jordan said, well, I'd like, I'd like very much interested in jazz. So the chairman of the board was the musical administrator for the White House when Reagan was in. Sinatra was the man that Reagan called on to get a jazz musician. Mm -hmm. So the King Jordan is coming. Reagan calls Sinatra and says, Sinatra, <coughs> get some guys for me You're for the King Jordan. So, so Frank called us, not Benny, because mm -hmm. Benny was going to go, <laughs> gonna go south. <laughs> so he said, see if you can get, see if you can get hacked and get melt. He said, we get by the rich. 
And Bunker picks it around and says, and do a little something for the King of Jordan. He likes jazz music. So Betty says, okay, you call him. So Frank called us. So we were naturally going to do it for the chairman of the board. So we get to the White House, and, and the Benny Benz wants a rehearsal. Now, you know Buddy Richard oh, make no rehearsal. Man. <laughs> but, but of course, I was there at the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Bucky was there, and Hank Jones and I were there. Mm -hmm. I put Benny's apartment over there. Yeah. And we come up there and sit around for a half hour. Benny comes out, hello, fellas. He picks up his horn and says, uh, I said, thank you, I'll see you later. See you right. later. And he never, he never touched his horn. Mm -hmm. Well, he got on that stage at the White House, and I never heard him play to be any more beautiful than he played that night. Right. And Buddy Rich, which everybody says is a violent, dangerous man, been turned around to him and said, uh, would you uh, mind playing Sing, Sing, Sing? He said, anything you want, Benny. He went into it just exactly the way Gene would have played it, not the way mm -hmm. Buddy would have played it. Mm -hmm. It was an amazing night. He played mm -hmm. that thing. Uh, da da dee dee da da dee 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 <laughs> What, uh, what uh, the, which one? Is the closing theme? No, not his. That, oh, 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 that thing, that song. Da 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 I don't know what that is. Well, that's because I can't say. Don't you know the words? <laughs> and, is it, is it, don't you know the words or anything like prayers? Uh, don't yeah, you know the words or nothing? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Benny, what 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 words? Some of the words, man. What are the words? Is one, uh, isn't it great? Huh? Isn't it grand? Oh, oh, Sit oh, in send in the clones. Sit, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> See, he knows how to get me to. <laughs> yeah. Well, well Frank Jones and Benny Goodman yeah. played that thing so beautiful that oh, night. Oh, yeah. It was just, the, the, the king of Jordan sat there and cried. It was just such a mm. beautiful night. One of the most beautiful nights I ever remember playing with him. Mm. Because it was no rehearsal. We just went in and we played all, all seven, coming 11, and all the songs that we knew yeah. about. And he really played it beautiful. Yeah, well, uh, it's, uh, uh, the things about um, Ellington said it. Uh, mm. Somebody said it anyway. Ellington is forever. I think the music is forever. That's right. Uh, the only regret that I really have, and um, I hope somebody will take care of it, the young people today coming up playing music and playing rhythm instruments particularly, not wind instruments so much, never have that experience of playing for dancing. That's right. And when we had to do it every single night. That's right. And you had to have it right. It is an exact thing that we do it is flexible but it's still exact that tempo and the time and the feel the mm -hmm. feeling that is given you know it's uh, uh it's something that they missed all together that's right true they, i mean a lot of the young people they missed it all together in big bands in fact they get together now and they have six pieces or seven pieces and um uh, synthesi synthesizer and uh, uh, electric uh, doodads, and they make they make noises, but um, they're not breathing noises. I and, just got to mention it about you, man. I've seen you under every kind of circumstances, and you amaze me how you can take over and get into make the punishment for the crime. And I'm thinking now. Of Duke into the 70th birthday in the White House. Oh, this, was, this was a magnificent. That was something. And, was, and I, I got to tell you, that, the public should know how that came about. Mm. Uh, Nixon was having a lot of trouble with the black community. Oh, yeah? He, yes, he couldn't, you know, we didn't, he didn't vote for us, we didn't vote for him, and he didn't do the damn thing for us. So <laughs> it, it went just that way. So he was having a lot of trouble in the White House, and he had a, 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 one, of his, one of his assistants used to be a clinic player, I can't call his name. Uh, uh, he was assistant to Nixon. He said, what do you think I could do to kind of make, get the favor of the black folks community? He said, well, look, if you give Duke Ellington the Medal of Freedom and give a party in the White House for him, everybody loves Duke. Say, that might kind of cool it out. He said, well, go ahead and do it. So that's how that thing came about. I thought about. Willis had something to do with that. Willis kind of, kind of, kind of, but the clinic player was, what is his name? He was he can't got to be assistant to Ray to Ray. Yeah. Huh? Oh yeah. He, was, he used to play Clarinet and Woody Herman's band. Oh, that's great. I know him very well. It's I nice to know. Yeah. Do we have a mole in the White that's House? Right. Sometimes? He was there. <laughs> so he organized it. He organized Beautiful. it. And they got together, Duke Ellington's 
friends. Sure I don't did. think there's ever been that many friends black folks in the White guys. House at any one time ever. Yeah, but a, I loved it because uh, there were white people there, too. Oh, of course, there were well, always yeah, white people there. Yeah. But I mean, like, uh, Bill Berry was in the band, Irby Green was oh, yeah, there, yeah. Uh, Jerry Mulligan. Well, I wasn't talking about the band, yeah. I was talking oh, yeah. about the, the public, the Duke oh, Ellington's friends. Friends of Ellington, Prince yeah. Ellington. Oh. Your wife was there, my wife was there, yeah. Bass's wife was there. Oh, sure. Within the line was there. They had a, the band was. Oh, yeah, Friends of Ellington. Yeah, Friends of Ellington. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, band that, that was five was... piano players. You remember the five piano oh, players? Oh, sure. Within the line. Yeah, uh, Earl Hines. Earl Hines, Mary McPartland. Yes. And Hank Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, yeah. the drummer was Louis Belson. Yes, yes. Uh, Jim yes, Hall yes. was a guitar player. Yeah. Uh, and Dizzy Gillespie was just in the audience. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't even on the stage. No, Clark Terry. Clark Terry. Clark, Clark Terry. Clark, was, and Bill Berry, yeah, that's Bill right. Bill Berry and Clark Terry. Yeah. And uh, uh, Al Hall on, on guitar. Uh, Al, uh, no. Al, what's his name Jim, on the guitar? No, what's the, Bill, no. Uh, uh, no, what's the Jim Hall. Jim, 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 Jim Hall. Hall. Yeah, Jim Hall. On he was the a most suspicious band. night. Oh, the reason yeah. I mentioned because you got up and sang that Tom. Oh yeah, but that that you were, you were shocked. Yeah. Tom Whaley. Oh yeah. Tom, Tom Whaley. Yeah, he Tom was said, a, "You want me to conduct?" I said, "You made the arrangements. Really Why don't you conduct it?" Man, you, know? you, you sang that. Oh, man. Well, I've been a lucky dude because I've been running. I talk like well, my sister, Pearl Bailey, always says, I've been to the White House so many times, I just call it the house. Yeah, yeah. So I'd been in there, everybody knew me pretty well. And I always had a camera. And they let me, everybody would let me have, go around with the cameras, you know. Yeah. So when things were going, the jam session got to be going, I had somebody else to base and I got my camera. Yeah. And I went around there and I really took some pictures. I, I got some pictures and I was just really. Love. I got I a know. picture of all of us coming in with our wives. I got pictures of us on a jam session on the bandstand. Yeah. And one of my best yes. pictures is a picture of you, Lou Rawls, and Ben Eckstein yes. trading courses on the blues yes, we in did. the White House. It's a beautiful picture. And I got a picture of Duke of Ellington Duke. dancing with Carmen DeLava Live. Yes, right. I have it on my wall at home. <laughs> and they finally got Duke to come up to the piano and play some in the jam session. Yeah. And you can see. Kissing you behind him with a glass in his hand, yeah. and where the line is sitting beside him on the van. Yeah. These are shots of just unbelievable shots. Just mm. because you and Billy Eckstein and Blue Rose yes. and Dizzy over that jam. In the meantime, they had a reception line going around, you know, to, to, to meet the to Duke and the President and Mrs. Right. Pres, Mrs. Mrs. Nixon. And my wife is in the reception line with Catherine Basie, Duke Basie's wife. And I got my camera, and I'm taking all these pictures. And my wife and wife are looking at me like, I know you're going to get us in front of the shaking hands with the president. And I'm snapping <laughs> pictures. When they got about three, three steps from the president, I ran out of film. Oh, and man, I can see the ray coming through to my wife, you know. And I'm dashing, you know, some, some photographers there. And I go over there and say, hey, baby, can you give me some film? The guy gave me a roll of film. But I was too nervous, I couldn't get in. I you never took that picture. And oh, all that, that they, they never forgave me for that. Oh, please. But it was an auspicious night. Yeah. To yeah, see all was, these wonderful. We drank champagne till 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I was trying to, to drink, that, drink up and ride up. What's that song you sang? Uh, the, Duke's song. Duke's Heritage? Yeah. The Heritage, My Mother, My Father in Love? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that one. Uh, and uh, Jump for Joy. Oh, now I know what I got to tell you. So it was all over. Now there's a, there's a Marine band that plays for all of the festivities in the White House. They were in the ballroom where they play for dancing. And I know the bass player. We're good buddies, you know. So they, they don't let any of that tape and stuff out of the White House, you know. So they taped everything that was going on there. Oh, yeah. When I come back later with Pearl Bailey, to, to do something in the White House with Pearl Bailey, and I see the bass player, he says, man, that's a great night. He says, you guys played so beautiful, and everybody was there. It's just great. I said, how do you know? He said, oh, we got the tapes here, you know, so we, we get the hit. <laughs> I said, man, I showed you. We got some tapes. He said, yeah, they, but they, they don't let nobody have them. Uh -huh. I said, no. I said, well, man, I sure would like to hear that. So I go on to perform with Pearl Bailey. And while I'm performing, the, the bass player comes over to me and says, where's your bass case? It's, mm -hmm. like, it's over here in the corner. Mm -hmm. So he you drops the drops tape in there. This is the time when Nixon was having all that trouble with tapes. The tapes. I, 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 
So that's what happened to the tapes. That's, that's what, what happened to the tapes, huh? I'll wheel my You <laughs> got them. <laughs> I'll wheel my bees out there with that tape. Man, you would have never known where I would have uh, by if they had caught me. <laughs> uh, uh, hold that bass there right there. Here, Blake. Blake, look at that. Here. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. That Reminds did. me of that tale that Pete told last night. But, you know, every time he'd go through customs going to Canada, mm -hmm. they wouldn't look at his tasty cakes. Mm -hmm. You know, they examine his tasty cakes, <laughs> they'd break them open, uh -huh. see if there's anything inside of them. You mm -hmm. know? And so he said, he got so he gets, when he goes to Canada, he gets his tasty cakes, you know, here, mm -hmm. and he gets a pound of dope here. He says, he says, they go start to go into tasty cakes. No, here's what you're looking for. He over here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> oh Lord. Well, it's your I want to thank you, man. You, you were. Uh, we could talk for days oh, yeah. and and never repeat. Oddly enough, um, it's, it's such beautiful to, to the, be here, Jim. Yeah, but you, um, uh, I thank you. Your time up at Hamilton. Oh yeah. That was so delicious. Well, you you made it possible. You know, for it. I thank the, you. That was uh, the milk, you know, Phileas, to. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's he's the man. man. Really he he is the man up there, sure one of the is. trustees. That's right. Uh, at Hamilton, and he uh, he, uh, he's done wonderful things to me. up there. But but to honor you, I got an idea too. I think if Doc Cheatham would just hold on a couple of years, I think we ought to get him. Oh, up absolutely, there. yeah. Because I don't believe yeah. what he has oh, done. He's he's amazing. You know. He's amazing. What man. is he, 80 what now? 90s. He's going to be 90. You, well, you're kidding me. Sure. He's 90. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Ten hold up and playing. And plays. I, I know. Not fooling around. He's playing, man. I know. <laughs> I know he's playing. Yeah, he's playing. You know, it, uh, it, it, it's difficult, I imagine. To... I was walking down the street with him in Nice, France, one day, the Nice Festival. Yeah. And I said, gee, this is nice being here, Doc. You see, I was in Russia in 1923. Oh, my God. I was, I was in the sixth grade. Jesus. <laughs> He's an amazing, amazing man. That <laughs> <laughs> was a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> 1923. But uh, uh, I was up uh, recently, I don't know whether I was said to on camera or not, but to uh, uh, when the commencement when they honored Clark Terry mm -hmm. this year. And... Uh, it was real, real big fun. I had a chance to tell him that he is now a collared fellow after I put the, <laughs> put the hood on his throat. <laughs> put the hood on him and he tightened it up and says, you are now officially a collared fellow. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Dr. Terry. Dr. 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 Terry. I, I want to thank you for giving us uh, thank you, that Joe. precious gift of our time. It's been 90 mice, as Joe Jones Oh, say. God. <laughs> I think okay. he's still left the base. Yeah. <laughs> Lady Mice. Lady Mice. <laughs>